We're talking Halloween movies on this Disney 100 episode of the Movies Past and Present podcast. Hello and welcome to the Movies Past and Present podcast. It's October 10th, 2023, and this is episode 114. I'm your host, Stanford Clark, and I'm podcasting from the crossroads of the West in beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. Just like my website, moviespastandpresent.com, I'll be providing recommendations, commentary, and reviews about current and classic cinema. Thanks for tuning in, and let's do this thing. Well, I'm excited to be joined by uh, my good friend, Chris Dallin. Hi, Chris. It's nice to be with you, Stan. Thank you. We've got a special Halloween episode that we're going to be talking about. We're going to do some Disney 100 stuff, but really, it's just Halloween movie season. Halloween movie season, and you know, my heart and mind goes to great movies, great things that I enjoyed, um, like Stephen King movies and Tim Burton movies, of course, M. Night movies, Alfred Hitchcock, Vincent Price, and then um, it's really hard not to think of those classic movie monsters from Universal Pictures, of course, Dracula and Frankenstein, the werewolf and the mummy. Just really a fun time of year to catch up on some classic movies. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, all the ones that you mentioned are so great. You know, I particularly love those Universal Monster movies, you know, from like the 1930s, I think are so cool. You know, Frankenstein and Dracula still always scares me. Uh, Bride of Frankenstein, I love. (laughs) Do you have a favorite classic horror movie, Chris? Well, I like all of those. You know, like Boris Karloff, of course, and Bela Lugosi's. uh, Really, everyone that has played a Dracula are compared to him because he really created the character. And then, of course, Lon Chaney and his son, Lon Chaney Jr. as well. Just playing The Mummy, The Wolfman, Phantom of the Opera. What's amazing about those is just they scare the snot out of you with (laughs) with with makeup and lighting. You know, and that's what's amazing. You know, amazing to me is is you think about that and just the way that they lit eyes or just the way that they set up the set. Um, really, if you love movies, it's a great way to look in on those practical sets. And you compare that to today with all the blood and other things. And those classic movies were just so stirring back then. Yeah. With light and makeup. Really yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, not to say that the, you know, the people who are making horror movies today are, aren't good filmmakers or good craftsmen but people, but I'm with you. Those, those, those classic horror movies really are something that I think are really a lesson in how to do it, you know? Exactly. Uh, so, uh, in our episode, we're going to be talking about a current, I think, actually quite a good Halloween movie that you can go see in theaters. Uh, and so let's just, we'll just get into it now for, for, uh, for reviews, Chris and I are going to talk about the new film, A Haunting in Venice. So this is an Agatha Christie story. It's actually based on her book called Halloween Party. And I haven't read this book, but, you know, of course, I'm, I think we're all familiar with kind of the Agatha Christie uh, model or, or, you know, or genre of a mystery film. And, and A Haunting in Venice really follows that. From what I've read, it really doesn't, the script, even though it's based on Halloween Party, doesn't really follow it. I think Halloween Party is set in London. This movie is set in Venice. I think Hercule Poirot was in it, but maybe that's maybe that's where the similarities end. <laughs> but still, still though, I thought it was you know a really interesting film. It's it's you know just the classic kind of whodunit, uh, but it's got I think some more scares in it than perhaps a typical Agatha Christie. What was your experience seeing Haunting in Venice, Chris? You know. Uh- I really liked it because it did. It, it add that kind of a phantom uh, thought and a mystery, a mystery to be solved, to be sure. But then you get the supernatural in that. And um, if you watch it, we won't give it away, but it's a great opportunity to kind of think through what the inspector is really seeing and what he's experiencing. 
And he probably leaves a changed man after his experience, and hence you get to experience that with him, Stan, mm-hmm. which is really cool. That was cool because I think often, again, I'm I'm by no means a pro with these these Poirot films, um, but it, it, they've really added like interesting stuff about his character. I think in these Kenneth Branagh interpretations, and he does, yeah, clearly because of the process he goes through with this, he's. He's kind of this bitter dude, right? Who's just closed himself off to the world at the moment. And this really kind of helps him see the world in a, in a different in a different way. The cast of this movie is really cool, right? It is. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a couple of the cast members that for me I, I wanted to mention. First of all, Tina Fey. Of course, we all know her from SNL. Yeah. We know her as a comedian. And, you know, to see her in basically a mystery Halloween type movie, you know, she has range, Stan. Yeah. And it's fun to see her do that. Yeah, I agree. Now, for those of you that are into the Western um, scene, Yellowstone is really popular. Um, of course, uh, Beth Dutton, um, Kelly Riley is in this movie as well and she's great again great range yes uh, she is certainly really not good. beth in this um <laughs> she she is another character altogether but she does an amazing job as well and you know kenneth Branagh, who, who also has you know directed the film uh just like he did with with uh murder on the Orient express and death on the nile you know on those remakes uh i think he does a very competent job in, in directing this film it's no duh set in Venice as we t- as we've talked about, and it mostly takes place in this you know palazzo that totally looks unlivable to me. But anyway, there's a, there's a family that lives there, and there's been a you know there's been a tragic death, and and uh, but the, the the cast is so interesting. Michelle Yo is in it, and she. What would you call her character, Chris? I mean, she's the one who leads the seance, right? The, kind of the trying medium. To, yeah, the yeah. medium. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's right. That's yeah. trying to conjure up this person who's died. And I'll, I'll, we'll keep the spoiler free because, you know, you need to go in it without uh, having it be ruined. But uh, she's she's great. Uh, Jamie Dornan is in it, and he's very good. There's, there's a child actor, and I can't remember his name, but he was in Kenneth Branagh's kind of uh, biopic, uh, Belfast. I don't know if you ever saw Belfast, but it's it's very good. And this is he's you know this this kid, this kid actor is, is is a really good actor. But I think the one thing that really makes this a Halloween type movie is that that Kenneth Branagh has added in a lot of things that are really kind of spooky. You know, there's ghosts and I mean ghost sightings and of course a lot more almost like jump scares than you might get in a kind of a typical mystery. I mean, a lot of mysteries, of course, are spooky, right? As they're trying to discover what's happening and who, you know, you know, clearly who done it. But I thought this had some really, it was, for me, it's like at the right kind of scares because I'm a total wuss, you know, when it comes to <laughs> horror movies. Yeah. I mean, let's be perfectly honest. But this was my kind of movie because again, they just thought it was, it was just more stylish uh, than like horrifying. Yeah, I agree. So there's a couple of things I love about these movies, the whole series. First of all, you know, the murder on the Orient Express and murder yeah. on the Nile and then this one. The wardrobe is amazing, man. Oh, yeah. um, and Good just point. and just some of the things just, that they do there. Yeah, it's true. Those costumes were fantastic. Oh, Because they're great. all period costumes, right? I mean, exactly. I think they get mentioned in the year. It wasn't like 1948 or something. I can't remember. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. just really amazing stuff. Classic style. Mm-hmm. But as we mentioned earlier, the reason to go see the film for me is uh, you go, the inspector is dispassionate. Um, he's very scientific. He's like, there's no way that ghosts can be real. There's no way that... That some of these things, and he proves that to be right a little bit, but then at the end, um, you see him wondering, hmm, what did I just see? Could that be? You know, and the idea of watching a dispassionate scientist, we'll call him for a moment, um, kind of open his mind up to say, maybe I don't know everything, and that's kind of a different twist of what we've seen in the Absolutely. past. Absolutely. And that's what I think the film brings is mm-hmm. that extra depth that we yeah. haven't seen before in this series. Yeah. 
Uh, I agree. Uh, I think if you like those type of you know mystery movies, or you're an Agatha Christie fan or whatnot, I highly recommend it. I think that, and even for any, even if you're not, I just think it's it's. I thought it was a really solid murder mystery movie. What about what's your you know final take on it, Chris? Well, I I would see it. It's it's really great. It's a simple film, but it's. Um, who done it? So you were kind of wondering, is it this person, that person? Of course, in the end, they solve the mystery. But um, again, with kind of the supernatural inclusion, kind of adds a little bit of a twist that we haven't seen in the series before. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, really, really a fun movie. I think, I think it's, it's for me, it's like the perfect Halloween movie. <laughs> you know, <laughs> creepy but not too scary, like nightmare inducing scary or anything, anything like that. So yeah, so check your local listings. I again highly recommend uh, a haunting in Venice. All right. Well, for classic cinema corner, we've got another Disney one hundred uh, uh, tribute. I guess, or, or, or just a massive list, really, Chris. Is, <laughs> <laughs> Chris and I have been looking at Halloween movies that have been produced by the Walt Disney Studios. And so we just wanted to go over a list of some we put there. There are so many movies. If you look at the, you know, the stuff that Disney's done, uh, also that they put on the Disney Channel, you know, those, like those Disney Channel original movies and whatnot. They're just a ton. And we're also going to include some movies that we like that, again, I think that are very Halloween appropriate from Touchstone Pictures and Hollywood Pictures, which was uh, both of those studios were run by the Walt Disney Studios. They were at the time kind of more the uh, the uh, grown up uh, uh, films for, uh, you know, offering to kind of expand their uh, expand the market. They're no longer making movies under those tiles for the most part, but then that's also kind of turned over now to 20th Century Studios, which which Disney owns and operates. But we're not gonna really. A Haunting in Venice was was from 20th Century Studios, so I guess that's our <laughs> that's kind of our homage to 20th Century Studios right, right. for this. Otherwise, though, we're gonna we're just gonna dive into some Halloween movies from Walt Disney Pictures. So that's the live you know live action. Uh, arm of Disney that's been making movies, of course, for many years. The first one that I thought of, Chris, was Blackbeard's Ghost from 1968. Have you seen? Do you remember that? From as, did you watch that as a kid, or what's your what's your experience with Blackbeard's yeah, Ghost? Yeah, I vaguely remember it, but you know, I kind of viewed it in the same ilk as Swiss Family Robinson. Yeah, and and those, you know, Robert Louis Stevenson kind of um, movies and books and so on, and. I, I think it was a lot of fun at that time because that was just kind of the adventure series that added this Halloween twist yeah. to the movies. It's I think it's a really fun movie. I recently rewatched it. It was part of my list on my you know from my Disney 100 watch list um, where I you know, have a have hundred movies from Disney that I just like and want to see wanted to see again. Uh, it stars Peter Ustinov who plays Blackbeard. Dean Jones is in it. Um, it's 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 just great fun. So it's on Disney. It's on Disney Plus unless, unless they pulled it. <laughs> you know, lots of stuff's getting pulled off. Of right, Plus. but right. Uh, but uh, I think that's that's fun. The next one that came to mind, Chris, was uh, one that I loved as a kid, and I rewatched it too, and I really liked it. Again. Escape to Witch Mountain, in 1975. There were there was a sequel that was made to this that I didn't feel was. I mean, it was okay. It wasn't. I didn't feel it was as successful. But this movie. Escape to Witch Mountain, I really liked. Uh, what's your memory of uh, Escape to Witch Mountain? Well, I, I liked it, and maybe this is a stretch, but as a kid, I remember seeing Star Wars in 1977, of yeah, course. Yeah. This was experiencing kind of the Force before the Force became yes, real, right? It's uh, true. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so as a kid, that was really cool that... That these seemingly uh, normal-looking kids have these superpowers that could do these things, and then uh, of course it's um, s something to note that they remade it right with the Rock later. Yeah, they made it with the Rock, yeah. which you know was fine, but I didn't feel like it was nearly as as good. Even with like the cheesy 1970 special effects, you know, <laughs> of the flying RV and stuff, um, yeah. I thought this 1975 one was a was a real winner. Eddie Albert plays you know. 
He's in it. He plays the kind of the grumpy old man that the the Force kids. Uh, I love that <laughs> they do have the Force. <laughs> so uh, another one that came to mind, which I also recently rewatched. It wasn't on my Disney One Hundred list, but I watched it just because from the recommendation of a friend. Um, the Watcher in the Woods from nineteen eighty, which, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the early like PG. Am I might think it might have even been rated. PG, which was pretty scandalous for a Disney movie, you right, know. Right. But it's so weird. It's actually, I thought it was cool, but it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> What's your memory of a watch of the Watcher of the Woods? Well, I I haven't watched it recently, but it's seared in my mind as a young as a young boy <laughs> watching it. There's this nefarious presence in the woods, of course, you know, the Watcher, and. Um, this kid experiences kind of um, signs on his mirror, right? And there's this name that appears there, Narek. Um, and that scared me to death. I, um, <laughs> no. I didn't know what was going on. You find out later, of course, that it's really Karen spelled backwards. Yeah. But um, really kind of an interesting movie. But it scared me as a kid. It yeah. Did. Yeah. It's uh, it's spooky. And, and uh, definitely... Um, Maybe we'll talk a little about it a little more, but I, I, I think it's definitely one to put on your list if you're looking for some kind of a creepy family Halloween movie that's actually kind of just nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is that. It's it nuts. is that. Yeah. There, I watched it. I, okay, it's all coming back to me. I watched it at a movie party with some friends. That's why that's what it was. And I think someone had it on disc, and there's like this alternate ending. That they, they had like in the bonus features or something, mm-hmm. which was even like more like what, like, what in the world is this movie? <laughs> anyway, I think you should any any person yeah, I think it's worth checking out. Another one um, from that same year is nine from nineteen eighty is the Ghosts of Buxley Hall. And I haven't seen this one for a long time, but I remember I think it's more of a comedy and you know, these ghosts come to haunt this hall and I can't remember, but I think it's just kind of again Classic Disney, more family, you know, kind of family friendly. And well, do you remember seeing it? Or does that ring really a bell? I don't remember seeing it, but you know, of that same ilk, and um, certainly not uh, a Disney film. But I remember about that same time, the Ghost and Mister Chicken. You know, Don oh, yeah, Knotts, among Nott. other things. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so taking this <laughs> this Ghost and Halloween and kind of making a comedy, yes. kind of was the thing. The thing. Uh, yeah. Then, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Don Knotts, outstanding. I don't know what studio made that one, Chris. It wasn't Disney, but still. Yeah, yeah, it should have been, right? I mean, it was kind of like the same vein of a Disney movie, right? That's right. Um, uh, this one I thought was quite different, and I remember it being quite striking because of this difference in tone, um, which is Something Wicked This Way Comes from 1983. And I think Disney was in a real, again, in a real transition period trying to find its way, but they were also, I think, experimenting with some cool stuff. This is based on a Ray Bradbury story, right? Yeah. What's your experience with this film, or what What do you remember from it? Well, just the name itself, you know, is a little scary. You know, Wicked, of course, is there and written in a way that it's a little bit different. But what's interesting about Ray Bradbury, if you're a Disney fan, um, it's my understanding that... that Bradbury had written Fahrenheit 451 at the time. So he was a famous author at yeah. the time. Um, it, it ended up that he was a fan of Walt Disney and um, saw him while they were Christmas shopping together. If you can imagine going Christmas shopping and seeing Walt Disney shopping in the, in the store. Oh my um, went up and introduced himself. He was delighted, I understand, Ray was, that Walt knew who he was. So they struck up a friendship and Ray said, Hey, we should have coffee or go out to eat or something. Walt invites him over to the office the next day, and they start talking. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine, hey, come on over to my office. Let's talk about stuff. Talk and there's wanting to be a fly on the wall. Right, right. So this friendship started. I think that's probably how the movie was made um, by Disney in the first place. But then they became, uh, you know, friends um, um, along the way. Of course, it, this didn't happen until much later, until Walt was was dead but um but he uh my understanding is the astral orbiter um ray bradbury uh and this is in disneyland of course the entrance to tomorrowland that attraction that's there 
um, it was his idea to have the planet spin one way and then the actual um, ride vehicle spin the other way and so it appears that it goes faster. The other piece at Disneyland that's Ray Bradbury, of course, is um, he wrote a piece called The Halloween Tree. And if you go to Disneyland during Halloween time, the Halloween tree is, uh, is there. It's in Frontierland. It's decorated. And even during the times um, when it's not Halloween time, there's actually a brass plaque at the bottom of the tree that says this is a Halloween tree proposed by Ray Bradbury. So um, if you go and want to see that, it's actually, again, in Frontierland, just outside of the mercantile there um, at the entrance to Frontierland. So anyway, a connection with Ray Bradbury that Walt Disney had made, and then they continued to be friends. And then, of course, uh, Walt Disney Pictures honored that later by making this film, Something Wicked This Way Comes. You know, Chris, that's so cool. Thanks for sharing that because I love the Halloween tree. I didn't realize that was a Brad... A Ray Bradbury, uh, you know, creation, or you know, his from one of his writings. Ray Bradbury also consulted on the original Epcot Center. Oh wow, yeah. I mean, original in that the thing that got built actually got built. You know, the 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 theme park that we know, right? You know, as Epcot today. Uh, I think, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, he did he write one of the original scripts for Spaceship Earth or something. I, anyway, I can't remember. Don't call me on the specifics, but anyway, that's uh, that's cool. Uh, as I recall, this is a really scary, very uh, moody, or just just kind of a just really dark movie. I think it's about a circus or something. Anyway, that's probably one that I will watch uh, this Halloween season just because I haven't seen it for a long time, and I, I hope it's still on Disney Plus. I'm I, I'm not, but anyway, I'll be able to find it. So now we're jumping ahead 10 years. I'm sure there were other movies, but this is just so jumping to 1993, where two of the most popular, I think, current day Halloween, Disney Halloween movies came out. First one is Hocus Pocus in 1993. Now I got to, you know, fess up, Chris. Uh, I don't care for Hocus Pocus. So, you know, I guess Disney fans are going to have to come at me. So, so <laughs> sorry. But I, um, I saw it in the theater in 1993. Didn't care for it at all. Uh, Rewatched it just before Hocus Pocus 2 came out of Disney Plus last year or within the last two years, whatever that was. And I maybe maybe I liked it a little bit more just because, like, okay, maybe this is what the appeal is. I thought Hocus Pocus 2 was terrible. <laughs> but but um, anyway, but that doesn't mean that I think Disney fans, I think it's a, it's a, I'm not sure it did great in the theater, but I think it's be really become a cult classic. Um, what do you think of Hocus well, Pocus? Well, I, um, the reason why I like it, Stan, is not necessarily the movie itself, but what the movie did. And, you know, before that, you get all these scary films. Um, you get, geez, The Mummy and Frankenstein scared the snot out yeah, of me when I was a so kid, scary. right? Yeah. What Hocus Pocus did for me is it brought some whimsical thought to this idea of Halloween. Um, it made it a little bit more child-friendly, made it a little bit more fun. And I think uh, that's what Hocus Pocus did, is it started kind of that movement of making Halloween kind of a fun time versus scary in the world of movies, anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, well, and th that's that, I think, for sure, is on Disney+, Plus as well as Hocus Pocus 2. So if you, you know, you really get your fill. But as I recall, like, either at Disneyland or maybe it was the Magic Kingdom at, at Disney World... They had like a Hocus Pocus show, like the three Sanderson sisters are doing a you know, Halloween show and and anyway, all sorts of stuff. Right, and they sing that song, you're going to have to help me remember the song itself, You Put a Spell on Me yeah. or something like so that. Like, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. and yeah. Uh, apparently that's a big deal during the Oogie Boogie Bash. Ah, uh, okay. It's a big thing. Yeah. yeah, well, and I think for me a lot of the appeal was just they hired good actresses. I mean, you know, Bette Midler and... Kathy and Jimmy and Sarah Jessica Parker. Maybe they didn't give them the greatest things to do, but maybe that's part of the appeal. Like a, a lesser actress maybe could not have pulled it off. I, I don't know. But, yeah. but it's it's popular to say, you know. Uh, but then also in 1983, I think something that even is even more popular is Tim Burns' The Nightmare Before Christmas. And that's still, that's celebrating his 30th anniversary this year. It's going to be coming back in theaters, I know, in October. It's going to have a limited run, so check your local listings if you want to see it on the big screen. 
But that film is now like a perennial classic, you know. Uh, I I love this film. I do too. Um, I think again, I think it's a fantastic film. Yeah, stop motion photography. Um, really a, a great film. I love the story. Jack Skellington, of course, is um, and and I love the whole premise of when these holidays collide, right? Yeah. And yeah, it's um, really he's clever. trying to figure it out. And then you get this this whole design of Tim Burton, which is just weird, yeah. right? I mean, it, it's kind of the Beetlejuice. <laughs> it's uh, like Beetlejuice. Yeah. Uh, Beetlejuice of Disney movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and it, it's just so much fun. And so I love how they took... The Nightmare Before Christmas, and then incorporated that in the Haunted Mansion. You know, at they, Disneyland. They right? did a really nice job with that, and that's a, they bring that back every year, and it's the longest line in the park when it's playing. You know, when it's when it's uh, when it's on. I think because everybody everybody loves it, and yeah. it's but it's great. I think part of the reason is I mean the movie's so good, but they did such a quality you know, interpretation of it, I think, within the Haunted Mansion, personally. I love right. it. I agree. And then the soundtrack and the songs by Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. Uh, just, just amazing. Yeah. And, and so sticky in our culture. Yeah. But I think the reason why um, Disney fans like us, if they would have made a permanent change in the Haunted Mansion, I think I'd have a big problem. Oh, yeah. I think we'd all be very upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But because it's an overlay, it's, an it's overlay. a lot of fun. Yeah, you know? it's and, an overlay. And, and they, yeah. they are faithful. They, meaning Disney, are they take it away every year, yeah. and then they bring it back. And uh, I think, yeah, I agree, that, that overlay. Well, and, uh, you know, speaking of Danny Elfman, he he's the singing voice of Jack Skellington, but he also is a speaking voice, right? Of one of the of of a uh, right. Is it Barrel? I can't remember which yeah. one. Which one he is? So, is it lock, stock, and barrel. Lock, is that right? stock, and barrel. Yeah, that's right. So Denny Elfman's there. Catherine O'Hara. Um, she uh, was in Schitt's Creek, right? Oh my gosh, um, she's just so funny. Home Alone. Home I mean, she was great. She's one of the best comedians. She's out there. really funny. Well, she's I the agree. voice of Sally. Too. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, in, I didn't know that. In a in a nightmare in the nightmare for Christmas. She's, oh, that's yeah. interesting. But she's also the voice of. Is it? I can't remember if she's which one. You know, I, who's who's lock, who's stock, who's barrel. Yeah, yeah. But, I I uh, think she's the middle one. She's I, the middle I, one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's yeah, the she's only sure. girl. She's the only female. Yeah, right? yeah. That, <laughs> the top that's three. Right. And then Paul Rubens is there too. Yeah. Um, of course. He's, you know, it rests in peace to Paul Rubens. But it was great to hear his He's voice. So, in that and as well. he and he he does a great voice. In that, I mean, you still can kind of hear some Phoebe Herman in there, but that's what's so great, about it, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a those, lot of fun. That's 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 one of the greats, and so I'm glad. I think maybe some, maybe I don't know if some Disney fans find it overrated or they get tired of it, but I I I like it. I think it's great. I like it um, because, and it makes the home decor even easier because <laughs> yeah. you can put it up in Halloween and go yeah, all the way to the Yeah, it's to Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> so, so really it's an economical thing yeah, too. So. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to jump ahead 10 years again with, uh, still with Walt Disney Pictures. Uh, maybe this is a movie that everybody's been trying to forget, but there was another Haunted Mansion movie that, I mean, there was one that came out this year, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but... Eddie Murphy starred in a movie called The Haunted Mansion, uh, which again was kind of themed, loosely themed around the uh, the uh, Disney Park attraction. Um, I remember thinking this movie really was pretty stinko, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I <don't. laughs> so, but I think for me it was one and done, Chris. I have not, I've never, I've never watched it again after I saw it in the theater. And this what is a, the Eddie Murphy, the Eddie version. Murphy one from yes. two thousand three, yeah. right? Well, here's my take, and I agree with you. I mean, it's not a great movie compared to um, the newer Haunted Mansion, of course, in my opinion, which I loved. But, you know, if you look back at the history of the Haunted Mansion from Disneyland, um, there was this big debate between the Imagineers of what should this be? Should this be a really scary attraction or should this be funny? And there was this big debate between Imagineers like X Antichio, Mark Davis, Raleigh Crump, and yeah. others, um, of, of course, who can forget Loretta Toombs, of course, that is involved in this. And so this debate went on and on, and they finally had to compromise. 
And that's why I think the Haunted Mansion is both funny and scary mm -hmm. at the same time. Which ironically makes it so endearing to so many people yeah. and they and they love this attraction. I think that's what they were trying to do by having, having Eddie Murphy as part of this. Yeah. Um, have it be both scary and funny. Um, but it didn't land for me. But um, I think that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. I, I can't remember too how much of the attraction ended up in this movie, either visual, you know, visual things or, or whatnot. Again, it was so long ago that I just remember thinking, "Wow, this is bad." But uh, uh, anyway, I think I think it's on Disney Plus, so people <laughs> want to dare to watch it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, beware. And, it's not. It's not very yeah. good. And you're gonna have to help me with the actor that was in that as well. He's. Um, the same one that's in the Princess Bride that says inconceivable. That oh guy. yeah, Wallace Shawn. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's in there too, and he's really funny in the movie, which was kind of his downfall too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, okay, now we're jumping to 2012, which is another Tim Burton stop motion animation movie that he was able to make for Disney. Um, Frank and Weenie. Frank and Weenie. Now yeah. Frank and Weenie. Did you ever see that short film? Of yeah, Frank with, and Weenie? yeah, which was live action. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Pet Cemetery before Pet <laughs> yes! Cemetery came to be, it was right? Like Tim yeah. Burton's version of Pet Cemetery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah before, right. yeah, before. <laughs> and I can't remember what year that short came out, but I remember was fascinated by it because uh, it's so Tim Burton, you know, right. but 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 very early Tim Burton. Whereas this one is a really fleshed out version of the story. I. I quite like Frank and Weenie, as I recall. It was funny. Um, and please forgive me for putting this in anyone's head, okay? <laughs> because it's not going to jump out now. But do you remember um, the old Steven Spielberg film, The Family Dog? Yes. I couldn't. Um, once Frank and you Weenie know, came out, he became The Family yeah. Dog. And I just chuckled the whole movie, which was horrible. <laughs> Looks like family dog. He does. It looks like the family dog. It really dog. does. No, that's true. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, that was like a TV uh, show or something, wasn't it? Or like a kind of a part of an interstitial or something. But. Well, well, yeah. That film. All the dog wanted to do was go out and use the bathroom, <laughs> and and it was just his encounters to try to go out. And finally, he became dispassionate about it. Goes in the middle of the floor, and then everybody blames everyone else. <laughs> but it's such a funny, yeah, funny show. It's funny. Yeah. Um, Frank and Weenie, I, if I'm also not mistaken, wasn't it that filmed in black and white? Too? It was, yeah. This yeah. Uh, but again, very, very Tim Burton esque. Maybe not as successful, clearly, as The Nightmare Before Christmas, but still, I think, worth watching if you like stop motion animation and you like Tim Burton. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Um, then we've got, jumping into 2021, Muppet's Haunted Mansion, which I think debuted on Disney Plus, didn't it? Yeah, I, if I I'm not mistaken, so. yeah. I think it was one of the early titles. It was fun. And yeah. it's fun. Yeah. And, you know, it's always just, typically it's just fun to see the Muppets, you know. Uh, I don't know if it's, I, I, would, I would hope it's still on Disney Plus, but again... Disney, you know, they're pulling all sorts of stuff off of Disney Plus, so right. who knows? But, but you think also given the Halloween season and there's a Haunted Mansion movie and all this sort of stuff, which leads us into this last one we're talking about from Walt Disney Pictures, which is Haunted Mansion from 2023. It came out. It it seemed weird. I mean, and I remember this when Hocus Pocus came out in 1993. I mean, you know, I know I'm I'm up there in years, but uh, they were released in the summer. And, you know, Haunted Mansion was released in July. And, again, maybe, you know, these these movie people are clearly, you know, smarter than I am. But why are they, why is a Halloween movie being released in July? Because I thought Haunted Mansion would have been a really good movie for right now. You know, yeah, I mean, for, I agree. for, uh, well, and to your point, Stan, may, maybe they did it so that it hit Disney Plus. Yeah, it hit Disney Plus uh, at yeah, the yeah. Halloween season. Yeah, that's, that's a really good, that's a really yeah. good point. Yeah. But this movie, unlike the Eddie Murphy movie, has some really quality stuff in it. I thought that the production design, in particular, of this Haunted Mansion movie, was really great because of all the very clever but very spot on homages to the ride uh, that I that really worked. For me, uh, 
that that is probably the part part I didn't like the most. I didn't necessarily love the plot, but I want to hear. I really want to get your thoughts on it. But I I thought it looked great. I did too. So two thoughts, and we talked about this in one of your previous podcasts as well. But um, one of the things that I didn't mention is uh, on Disney Plus. If you go into the Imagineering section, there is a piece where Walt interviews Raleigh Crump, and Raleigh is working on the Haunted Mansion and what might go in it. And originally it was going to be a wax museum and then some other things. Um, they created yeah, like a the, walkthrough. Yeah, right? yeah, that, that's right. And they created the Omni Mover, which is now the Doom buggies, right? That you that you ride in. But what what's interesting in that is he was working on the Museum of the Weird, is what he called yeah. it. Yeah. And it was these weird things that that um, they were looking for ghosts from all over the world and other things to come and live in the Haunted Mansion. Um, was the idea. And that's where, like, the wallpaper that is so popular now came from. Some of those style things. And they really pay homage to that within the, within the movie. The other thing that I really loved is if you're a Disney Park fan, there is a whole different look between Haunted Mansion in Anaheim and Haunted Mansion in Florida and Tokyo and other places. And the film just kind of fixes all of yeah, that. And it's so fun? great that it, it is, brings it all so together. It's so great. I love that about yeah, it, too. Yeah, it was I great. thought that, you know, it's one of those where they were kind of playing, you know, fan service to Disney Park fans. But it worked, you know. that It, it was it was so, it was so fun. It was yeah, fun. Yeah. I, you know, it's I think it'd be, it's a fun movie, you know, pretty family friendly that, you know, you could watch for Halloween. And, and that one for sure is on Disney+. Plus. I think it just got put on, you know, in the last few weeks. On Disney Plus, so definitely um, check out Haunted Mansion. Um, okay, so now to shift a little bit, we got uh, just a handful of films from Walt Disney Animation Studios. So these are going to be, of course, animated films done at Disney, but not, you know, not these not these live action films that we we're talking about from Walt Disney Pictures. Um, going way back, one of the first movies or first, excuse me, early shorts. Is uh, as a silly symphony. I'm not saying it's the skeleton dance from 1929, which is, I think, kind of on a way almost iconic. You know, uh, it's just literally skeletons that are dancing to music, right? Right, right. <laughs> and a lot of interesting camera techniques and whatnot. Uh, what do you think of the, of the skeleton dance, Chris? Well, I think it's great. As a Disney fan, um, of course, it's hard not to be an Ub uh, Iwerks fan. Yeah. Um, who, as you know, was the early artist that really made Mickey Mouse come to life. Yeah. He was the artist on this film and um, just did a great job. And you can see his experiments and see the other things. One of the things, um, there's a biography written about Walt Disney, too, that he was terrified of owls. This owl attacked him as a child. And in a lot of the scary parts of Disney films, an owl will show There's up. There's an owl, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so an owl is a big part of this as well, which, yeah. which becomes this creature. And so um, it's kind of fun to watch it. But uh, what's fun about these early movies is how magical it must have been to see something in animation back then. If you put on your 1929 yeah. glasses, it really is a crazy great film just because these skeletons are alive they're dancing around and um uh the one thing that i noticed just within the film as well is they must be related to vampires because they could only dance at night when the sun started right, to come was, up yeah. they had to hurry and get back in the grave right yeah That's right. <laughs> they're related <laughs> well i'm so glad you brought up Ub iWorks because I think that's one of the magical things about the skeleton dance short is uh, how he moves, quote unquote, the camera. Kind of, you know, yeah. the the way what you see with the skeletons and how and how it all how it all comes together. It's really worth checking out. If I'm not mistaken, Chris, this one has recently been restored and is it's on. You can see it on Disney Plus. So, yeah, yeah. So highly recommended just to check it out. Just if not, and I think that's just kind of historical. Thing. Maybe you're not necessarily gonna love it because I mean it, you know, it's got it's kind of that music and stuff. You could tell that that, that, that um, you know it's from from the late 20s, but still, I, I I think it's fantastic. Another really great Disney Walt Disney Animation Studio short for me is um, Lonesome Ghosts from 1937 that stars 
um, the great trio of Mickey, Donald, and Goofy. Uh, I, I love I love this. I love, remember loving it as a kid, and I, love, I still love it today. It, it's a great film. I, I love it. Again, 1937, as you mentioned. Um, and this was when um, Mickey was kind of... Uh, drawn in the classic way right um yeah so uh, as you watch this film it's funny because they are the original ghostbusters right they have <laughs> that's right they have they a, are. A, yeah they have a, a ghost <laughs> totally. business yeah but what's funny about it is the ghosts see this <laughs> the ghost advertisement yeah. and they're like hey let's call them you know yeah, so, it's just a torment now, right? yeah <laughs> so the ghosts call them to show up and then of course you get the classic antics of the Three characters that we know and love. You know, I love those Mickey, Donald, and Goofy shorts from this time period. Um, they're they're so great, and and this is just no no exception. And, and I think really great, really great for Halloween. And as you said, just the the great kind of the really classic character design. I think for all three of them, you know, all for right. Mickey, Donald, and Goofy, and um, funny. I think it's 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 you know it's humorous and just kind of like the perfect um, Halloween. Short from Disney, you know, family friendly. Um, the last one from Walt Disney Animation Studios that, we're, that we'll hit on uh, is one of the package films. It's actually the last package film from, you know, the post World War II period uh, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. So it's got two stories in it it's got The Wind in the Willows, um, which, of course, is the, the Mr. Toad part, and then the Ichabod part, which is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Um, which is really scary. I mean, yeah, but, yeah. but but fantastic. It's just kind of the combination when when Ichabod is getting chased. It takes a minute, you know, until you know, the end, of, kind of the end of that the, the film, really. But man, when the headless horseman shows up, that's thrilling. I mean, and, and again, so the combination of it's like the perfect combination of scary and funny because Ichabod is so comedic, right. and the way you know he's riding his horse and all the stuff that's happening is is he being pursued by the headless horseman but the headless horseman that's that's a fantastic scary representation of uh, uh let's what's your take on Ica, on on uh, the ichabod uh short well yeah I, I i love it and and thank you for asking um i love how they take a lot of these films and incorporate them into the parks yeah yep. so um during halloween time at disney the headless horseman walks down with this beautiful black horse, yeah. holding uh, holding his holding jack o' lantern hair, <laughs> yeah, and walking down. So it pays homage to that as well, which is really fun to watch. But it is a little creepy. Yeah, it's creepy. Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the parade they do at Walt Disney World during the you know the whatever I think they call it, Mickey's Not So Scary uh, Halloween party, maybe they call it that. No, it's the Oogie Boogie Bash that they do in, right, in California, right? right? But yeah. The Headless Horseman, like, rides his horse fast down down Main Street. Right. They're the Headless Horseman, and uh, and it's super cool and super creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I like that's that's a, that's a, that's a great thing. But uh, but the Mister Toe part isn't Halloweeny at all. But the uh, the you know the Ichabod portion of that of that film uh, is is great for Halloween, and that one I think for sure is still. I think that's on Disney Disney Plus. Chris, let's jump now to to Pixar Animation Studios, which, of course, is um, an important part of uh, Disney these days. Um, I came up with two Halloween, t- you know, films. First one is is the short that it's not necessarily short. It was like a TV special, but it, you know, I think it's you know, so twenty two minutes, whatever. Toy Story of Terror uh, that was made in twenty thirteen. What do you think of Toy Story of Terror? Uh, I thought it was cute. Yeah. Of course, it was fun. It was a great way to incorporate some of the things. And and what's interesting, again, it seems like I'm bringing this. How do they incorporate it into the parks, Chris? <laughs> no, um, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I love how they uh, took those. And you can see some of those things in Cars Land. Right? Yeah. You see some of the bugs and some of the... Um, Design techniques that they used in the film as well. That's 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 really fun. I think I think this one has Combat Carl in it. I'm not I, right. I, this, <laughs> anyway. It's it's it, it, it's it's a fun it's a fun thing. I mean, if you like the Toy Story characters, right. that's you know it's 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 a great little thing to watch. And it said again, it's you know relatively short. It's just meant to be a you know a TV. I think it was you know like played on ABC you know whatever. Uh, 
plays for 22 minutes without commercials. Um, for me, though, I think really, and, and this is more of a Dia de los Muertos film, uh, Coco, from, right. from 2017. And I think it's a perfect film. I mean, it's a perfect film really any time of year because I absolutely love it. But for this time of year, I think it's, I think it's a great film. It is fun, and the thing that I like about it, and and the Mexican culture that they bring into this yeah. as well, is it has a lot of soul and it has a lot of spirit. You know, the family's so important, and to remember them, and I, I really love that about Coco. Yeah, Coco, uh, Coco is just such a beautiful film. I cry every time. Uh, it, too, uh, it's it's so different in tone than these other films we're watching because it's not particularly scary. <laughs> Even though you think all those skeletons would be so creepy, I I think that the magicians of Pixar, however they design those skeletons to be appealing rather than creepy, kudos to them. You know, mm -hmm. I, it was really I think remarkable, and just the great uh, messages that are in that film. Really fantastic film. That for sure is on Disney Plus. Um, all right, now we're going to get into the touchstone in Hollywood pictures uh, film list, and these aren't too terribly long. And with the touchstone pictures, there are three. And let's just say that one of these films is not like the other. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll start with that one, and it's Ernest Scared Stupid from 1991. Now, Disney had a deal with Jim Varney. You know, they were making these Ernest. I, I don't know how many they made, but they made a few of these right. Ernest comedies you know, that, that are on film and that all were I think very formulaic just real vehicles for that character who was super annoying but I guess but he but popular right? silly yeah, yeah super silly yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure I've even seen this film I think we were talking about <laughs> I don't it, think yeah <laughs> and I don't even know where you could find it but but uh, maybe Ernest fans could chime in or again come <laughs> after me because <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get to the good stuff um Two films from, from Touchstone Pictures that uh, I just think are absolutely fantastic. Um, first off is is Unbreakable uh, by M. Night uh, Shyamalan. And then Signs. Those were 2000 and 2002. And I, wow. You know, seriously. You, you know, I know that Signs is a particularly meaningful film for you Chris it is and um, love this film as a matter of fact it might might be one of my top five of all time yeah, films. it's really, not just Halloween yeah, films yeah um, I love what it means I love the way that the vehicle is I love that it's this horror film really um, of aliens that come down but then um, how a family embraces their weaknesses and understands that in the end um, it's really the weaknesses that save them, which is really amazing. It's really, it's such an impressive film. Scary. If I guess, I don't know if it may, it's, you know, scary would be the right word, huh? It's thrilling. I mean, you're just yeah. like, what is happening? Because it's you know, there's some really intense moments in there. But again, it's it's just I think just because it's just so well crafted. Uh, you know, I think you know we had talked about you know prior to our recording that. M. Night is s such a gifted filmmaker. He often gets compared to Alfred Hitchcock. And, mm -hmm. and it'll be interesting to see what happens with his body of work, you know, over time. But I think that both, both Unbreakable... See, I, Unbreakable, I, I haven't seen for a long time, but I remember absolutely loving it because uh, the performance was so good. The story was so interesting with, with uh, Samuel, you know, L. Jackson and, and Bruce Willis. Right. Right. And uh, just so well crafted, and again, kind of like a surprising, the classic M Night surprising twist, you know. <laughs> just exactly. find, just find out. Uh, but I think both of those films under the Touchstone label, Unbreakable and Science, were amazing. You know, absolutely amazing. I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, just three three movies under Hollywood Pictures, which um, again, I don't necessarily know why Hollywood Pictures was created. I'm sure there was some business reasons and stuff behind it, or maybe they were just trying, it helped them with collaboration with other production companies or something. But anyway, I think these two movies actually are, 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 are good, really good. Um, Arachnophobia from 1990, which if I'm not mistaken, was a collaboration with Amblin, Amblin uh, which is you know Steven Spielberg's production company. But um, that creeped me out. 
Jeff Daniels does a nice job in it. Jeff right? Daniels yeah. is very good. Yeah. Yeah. John yeah. Goodman right. is very good right yeah. as, as, as the exterminator. Right. Right? <laughs> and lots of spiders. Like this, yeah, these, these these creepy spiders, or at least a creepy spider that is uh, that is wreaking havoc on a community. Uh, I, but I think that's a good one from 1990. I'm not sure where you'd watch that. I don't think it's on Disney Plus, but uh, might be worth checking out. I also remember this film called The Hand That Rocks the Cradle that uh, Rebecca De Mornay plays some crazy <laughs> lady, <laughs> and then it was really scary, a really you know a really solid yeah, thriller, was, kind of a grown up thriller. I, I agree. You remember that I, one? She okay. was scary. I mean. You you kind of at the beginning you're like oh she's such a nice girl and then you change your mind later <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh, yeah. exactly um, that was from 1992 and then from 1999 back to M Night Shyamalan um, the Sixth Sense which if I'm not mistaken was his first feature film and. So good. Amazing. So good. Amazing. There wasn't a person on the planet, and I remember going to see this film. Everyone was good about not giving it away, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. But but you went, and there wasn't anybody I talked to that wasn't like, what? I, I can't believe. <laughs> the mind oh, was blown. God. Completely blown. You know, and that's what makes his movies so deep, is there's usually some crazy twist that makes you think yeah and uh that was the case here but it was scary it was but really scary. And, and a mystery and it had that hitchcock kind of thing yeah, going yeah, for yeah. it too and and to your point i agree um i think there's so many things that the m night and alfred hitchcock have in common one of which they both starred in their own films, right? They both yeah. at least appeared <laughs> in their they, films. They show up. yeah yeah which was really interesting as well so um, really a great movie, and uh, it's hard to argue that Sixth Sense is what isn't one of the best Halloween films, at least scary, ghosty films. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, one last, you know, I guess branch of the Walt Disney Studios uh, I wanted to touch on uh, is the Disney Channel, and. The Disney Channel original movie, or the DCOM, uh, which they have made a bazillion of. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the first DCOM was under wraps oh, wow. in 1977. Excuse me, 1997. Right, Sorry, right. I'm thinking Star yeah. Wars. 1997. Uh, under wraps was about these kids that find a, find a mummy. Right. And uh, it got remade. In 2021, and I think I'm not sure if it played on Disney Channel, the Disney Channel, but it was definitely on Disney Plus. Uh, I don't remember really liking it under wraps very much. <laughs> then again, I'm not the target market, you know. Uh, in in researching this podcast, there there have been just so many kind of spooky movies that they've done, for, you know, probably for how you know around for Halloween, right? That that they've put on Disney Channel or or, or can be branded, you know, as a decom. Um, one that seems to be quite popular, and I think they were it generated multiple sequels to, is Halloween Town from 1998. That starred Debbie Reynolds, among others, in it, and that was filmed here in our home state of Utah, yeah, right? Yeah, Halloween High was. Um, I understand, which is a sequel, right? Yeah, it was yeah, one yeah, of the, yeah, one yeah, of the that's sequels. Right. Um, school in Salt Lake City where they filmed it. And okay, uh, of course, there's been a lot of great films in Utah, which. Um, we'll talk about in another episode, but that's one of those that was filmed here in Utah. Well, and speaking of Chris, uh, this is not a Disney film, but one that we're going to bring up because it's just again, just because Halloween and speaking of film in Utah, right. there's a very famous horror movie that was that was that was filmed in, in, in Salt Lake City. Halloween. Yeah. Halloween itself, speaking of Halloween. Yeah, ha was, right. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, Michael Myers Halloween. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, the scary Michael Myers, yeah, not, not the other one. Not yeah. the other one, yeah. yeah. But yeah. then also, um, what was the one from the 1960s that we were... Oh, uh, yes. That we were talking about. Yeah, uh, not, not a Disney Not film, Disney, again. But, but really um, more of a historical gem um, to see what Salt Lake City looked like in the 60s. 
uh, back during that time, it was kind of the end of an era um, with Saltaire. So Saltaire was beginning to go out, and the director of this Which film... Which was a resort to, so, at yeah. the Great Salt Lake. Yes, that's yeah. right. So he made this film called Carnival of Souls um, that was filmed in 1962. Um horrible film don't recommend it to, to watch it um, along the way but if you want to see um the starring city salt lake city um kind of uh really an interesting time in our history it's really a great way to see salt lake city so i recommend it for the scenery not for the film itself <laughs> that's right you want to yeah. get a little history uh, local history right <laughs> that's right what salt lake city looked like <laughs> So, Chris, we've gone over a lot of a lot of Disney movies here, and again, I'm so grateful for for your your input and 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 uh, sharing your knowledge uh, with us. Do you have uh, you know, of these films you mentioned, or is there another one? Are there some that you just really think people should watch? You know, as I was preparing for this, and I didn't know it until I was preparing. I didn't know how big of an M. Night Shyamalan fan that I was. I love his movies, Stan, especially in this case. Yeah. Um, uh, especially Signs. Signs, um, you have to watch this film. Um, if you uh, look at the meaning behind the film, um, it's about family. It's about understanding that all of us have weaknesses. And sometime in your life... If you um, open up your eyes, you will find that the weaknesses that you have been giving and have to struggle through, there might be a reason for that. And uh, really, when you think about signs in that way, the vehicle that M. Night brings is scary, but the meaning of the film is so profound and inspiring. That's what makes this film so great, is, yeah. it, is there are several messages in it. If you just watch it superficially, yeah, it's a scary movie. But if you watch the meaning behind it of how people can change and frame things up and become better people when they embrace their weaknesses um, in an effort to help others, really great. Again, um, in this film, little boy, uh, he has a breathing problem. Um, little girl thinks that all the water is dirty, so she leaves water all over the house. Mel Gibson's character loses his faith because his wife is killed. Joaquin Phoenix's character um, can't make a living at baseball because he swings so hard. All of those things, all of those weaknesses save them in the end. And I truly think that that is a great example for life, Stan. I really do, um, that we all have weaknesses. And if we handle them right, they become strengths and it and makes us better people. I love the film because for that reason, it's really inspiring to me, yeah. even though it's a scary film. Yeah, uh, I with you, Chris. It's it's such it's such a fine film, and um, yeah, scary for Halloween, but but it's one of those that really you could watch anytime because it's it's so meaningful. You know, I think you could really, yeah, it's it's terrific, terrific, yeah, perfect well, movie. Yeah, I uh, agree, and I'm interested in your stand. What what do you recommend? Well, you know, the, the three that I would pull from from this list. Just say like you know, at least that I I know that I'm gonna probably either rewatch or yeah, I probably rewatch. Is first off is the Watcher in the Woods just because it's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> say if you haven't seen it, it's one of the more unusual Disney movies you'd ever, you'll ever see, and it's worth seeing just because it's it's so it's so it's so crazy, so creepy, so weird. Uh, and if you can see that alternate ending, maybe. I'll have to look and see it. if there's if, if someone's put it on YouTube or something. Maybe I'll post it to the podcast notes on my blog <laughs> if, if I can find it. That's a big if. Uh, then I'd say Tim Burns' The Nightmare Before Christmas, just uh, because yeah. this is all the stuff we talked about. How, how just how good how good that how good that movie is. And then I'd add Coco because again, Coco's more of a you know the Day of the Dead movie than a Halloween movie, but. Uh, I, I, I love it so spectacular animation such such a great story uh, you know so I think it's really emotional um, I love it I love it I think it's so, so great any other films that really stand out to you Chris that you think that our listeners should uh, you know Halloween movies that they should watch yeah well and let's go back to where we started um, it's it's hard I 
I can't let it go without saying it. Some of those early days when they took the scary and made it funny. Yeah. Um, Abbott and Costello meet the mummy. <laughs> yeah. Abbott and Costello meet the wolf man. Um, all of those, those are just amazing are, movies. Those are good movies. Those are funny movies. <laughs> they, yes. They really are. And I love those as a kid because I was just so scared during this time of year. Yeah. And they just brought this extra fun to it. Um, yeah. And those things are a lot of fun for me. So I look for those things that make light and fun of something that might be scary might, otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one last movie too I'd like to add, which is not a Disney movie, is Young Frankenstein. <laughs> which is yeah, one of my favorites. It's so great. It's just so funny. It is so Well, great. what I love too is that Mel Brooks used some of the same, pro- he was able to find some of the props that were used in the original Frankenstein. I think they try if they didn't use the same backdrops, they tried to mimic the backdrops that were you know done those really moody uh, things for the the James Whale put in the put in the original Frankenstein film and just create just this crazy the craziest most hilarious thing and shot in black and white right? <laughs> yes and then I added vernacular to our language Abby normal and all kinds of stuff that's right <laughs> yeah. from you or whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly putting on the rinse yeah. it's just never the same <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love that movie yeah. so so much well Chris this has been so great thanks again for taking the time and thanks Thanks so much for your wonderful, uh, uh, you know, commentary. I I just appreciate it so much, Chris. Thanks. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you, Stan. And one thing that just popped into my mind that's worthy. So my wife hosted a crazy Halloween party on one occasion, and we were challenged to find the most crazy Halloween movie that we could find. Again, not a Disney film, thank goodness. Um, Killer clowns from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> you can find this on some you know, streaming I service. I have somewhere. heard about it. I don't think I've ever seen it. Tell oh, me it's about it. so 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 bad. I mean, it's so bad. But that's what makes it so great. It's it's got to be one of the top five worst movies ever made. <laughs> but it is just so funny to watch it. It's like those old classic B movies. Which, which is another thing, right? The big spiders are, that are walking around. Yes. The, um, the giant woman, the um, the giant man, the uh, you yeah. Know, all, all of those things are really the funny. The but, woman or whatever, yeah. Yeah, but Killer Clowns from Outer Space, um, if you wanted to have one of those crazy it's kind of like the equivalent of having the christmas sweater party oh, okay you know <laughs> um, just crazy <laughs> halloween movies but but overall you know um signs is still my favorite and it's just a fun time of year to embrace some of those things as as the light kind of changes from light to dark and we think about other things along the way it's a great time to watch a great film. It's a little chilly outside. You get some popcorn and a warm drink and sit down and watch a great movie, Stan. Yeah, well, thanks so much, Chris. Well, happy Halloween to you and your family. You too. Thank you Thank so much, you. Stan. Great to be with you today. Thank you. Well, that does it for this episode of the Movies Past and Present Podcast. Again, huge thanks to my buddy Chris Down for joining me. Uh, more information about the movies discussed in today's podcast can be found in the podcast notes on my blog at moviespastandpresent.com. Subscribe to the podcast where you listen to your podcasts. And follow me on Instagram. I'm at moviespap, as in past and present. As always, I hope you will enjoy some good movies this week, whether they be from the past or the present. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, be safe out there and dedicate yourself to the truth. Oh,